exists right now, which is AI. And we brought the guru in to talk about it. Thomas is actually known as the AI nerd. So with us today is Thomas Helfrich. Now he's an actually technology guru, business innovator, and CEO of Instantly Relevant Incorporated or instantlyrelevant.com. Now using a combination of emerging AI technology and expert human insight, his company helps founders, entrepreneurs, and startups earn more traffic, tap into revenue, revenue streams, and capture the attention of relevant audiences. Now, his data-driven approach uses customized content and social media engagement to help growing businesses reduce their time on social media while creating millions in revenue and growing accounts for customers. Now, Thomas has a humorous and larger-than-life personality that creates unmatched customer experience for clients. Thomas, thanks for coming on with us today. I appreciate that. And I think if I wrote that intro on my team, we need to shorten it. Brevity isn't key in this day and age, but thank you for having me on. Oh, that was great, man. You should see some of the intros I have. They're like half pages. I'm like, wow, this has oh. to be condensed. It's like, here's my hobbies. Even I was here's getting uncomfortable. Children I have. Okay, here's their get names. On with it, man. Their get ages. on with it. I'm like, <laughs> nice to meet you. Yeah. Nice see, listen, you are like the, the right place at the right time. I mean, I can't think of a hotter topic than AI right now. So what do you think from your perspective? Because you've been doing this for a while and now you're seeing this explosion with chat GBT and all this other stuff. So like, what's that like for you to experience it considering this is your thing? Well, I, well first of all, for foremost, thank you and for the your audience for just giving me a moment to kind of just talk and, and just share some ideas uh, around mm -hmm lead generation marketing and how maybe AI plays with any kind of business of almost of any size from the solopreneur up to, uh, let's say, an enterprise size. Maybe as a way of background, just to establish some credentials. You know, I, I grew up dot-com time as a developer. I definitely remember myself to be a better developer than I was. But uh, but, I, but I've always spoken well about technology because I've understand fundamentally what it can do to an organization at the executive down to the technical levels and then be able to help bridge that gap. And, and that takes you on that consulting path through the, you know, the KPMGs, the PWCs of the world. And in the last 10 years specifically, I, I developed a higher, a good expertise around intelligent automation and AI systems. And the notion behind that is you automate as much of a process as possible, but you, you leverage humans to lead it and you leverage humans to be accelerated by it. It's not everyone's view of it, but it's the way actually how intelligent automation AI systems work better is when you're accelerating humans, not really replacing them for the for the core activities. And so during that journey, you know, you, you, you get this expertise, you do a bunch of, you know, implementations and assessments and strategies and workshops. I noticed in the marketing world, as I worked with marketing teams, that they were very good at uh, being inefficient <laughs> and very good at lead gen of not producing enough results, but yet lots of spend, lots of cost, lots of inefficiencies. And that's a perfect candidate for something like intelligent automation. So I took those principles and I said, hey, I think we can leverage AI to create content, to do better outreach, to leverage it, to accelerate humans' interactions, what kind of content we create, like, you know, and how do you, you know, build a funnel and all the things that go with it. And that's exactly what we started doing about two and a half years ago. And so now today, everyone knows this thing is ChatGPT, and it's one of the cool technologies. We've been leveraging OpenAI's beta for almost three years now, and it's 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 been a very powerful tool for us, but it's all human-led. So I know it's a longer-winded thing, but the idea is we have a lot of experience leveraging AI just beyond ChatGPT or OpenAI's platform or Codex. But we, you know, the whole piece is still all human-led, incredibly consultative because it doesn't, you know, none of this stuff works, by the way, unless you have humans involved. So I'll take a breath, but that's the background and the backdrop. That's interesting. So you, you knew you did this thing years before it became a thing. Um, and what do you think about ChatGBT? Because, I mean, it's interesting. I was just having a conversation with some people last night, really smart guys. And one of the guys is like, there's no read. We don't need to write anymore. Like, literally, this has changed the game that much. I mean, that's a pretty bold statement. This guy's a doctor. He owns his own doctor practice. He owns his own practice. So it's just interesting. Off, I mean, that's a massive shift in perception from people not even being exposed to what you've seen for years and now getting to a point they're like, we don't even need to write anymore. This thing completely does it for us. What's your perception? Like, what do you really think about, about what ChatGBD is and what it's doing? First of all, the name's terrible. From a branding standpoint, it needs to change because general predictive text is, you know, <laughs> I know who cares. Uh, that aside, uh, it is a mistake. I think you don't need to write anymore. Right now, it's novel because not everyone's using it. People are trying to sort it out. It, people are feeling the acceleration of what it can do for you. However, you'll still need to be human-led in your brand and your personality and your tonality of it, what you're using it for. Uh, we, we can go down the path later of like the you know fact-checking and explainability and transparency of what the AI model is presenting to you as fact or as something that you can leverage with, with copyright, other issues. 
but you still need to read and you still need to read and you still need to write and you still need to create. You can just use this technology to improve. You can tell use this technology to help you generate ideas that you can then make your own. Otherwise, it's, it's long term. It won't work for you because it'll, you know, the search algorithms will see it can predict that it's an AI written text and you didn't write it. And then it, it'll deprioritize that in search and other things. And people will it'll just become a numbing thing that you, the creativity will become what's important. So it's not that you stop writing. You could just do it faster. You could do it more accelerated and you can leverage humans um, or, you know, companies that know what they're doing with this to further your brand, further your outreach, further your, your ability to, to generate new revenues or customers. So well, it's interesting you say that because I'm interested in that as well as I'm seeing more tools come out where you could type something in or, or pro provide content to it. And it tells you if it's AI written or not, how does that work? How can well, Google determine yeah. if something's AI written? It's pretty actually simple uh, because if it looks at your statement and says, if AI can predict with some level of certainty, 98% what the next word is going to be, likely the AI, an AI wrote it. And so if it can't predict what you would have said next or how your your how the tone would have changed or some kind of you know flow of that document or that image or whatever it'll be, if AI can't predict with certainty what would happen next or what it would do with that same set of parameters, it would know that it's likely to be more authentic or original. Hmm. Interesting. So the human factor, if it doesn't have that human factor, well, then how can it determine what the AI is going to do? Let's start with the basics. Like, how does it work? Like, Chat GBT, is it pulling all of this data from the internet and then, I mean, like, give me an idea of like, if I tell it to write an article on whatever, building business credit, which is in my world, then where is it getting its knowledge from? Where is it getting the information? Yeah, and definitely remember that point of where it's getting information from because it's, it's an interesting thing to do. And and, and I don't want to get too big with the esoteric pieces of it, but because I, I want to get down to also with you of how businesses can leverage this today. But how it works effectively is it has lots of data points if you do simplify it, you know, millions, let's say, and it can take the based on just fuzzy logic and its algorithms to say, hey, this is likely the right answer based on what it's found and what it knows from the web. Um, you know, chat GPT is based on GPT 3.5 models. The new four is out, which then takes that 571 times even more um, data points, which makes it exponentially larger uh, and more powerful. And it'll look at all types of pieces of information and, and assert back what is likely the most logical or, or correct answer based on your inputs. And that could be inputs of, hey, write an article with this type of tone that's, you know, factual and, and yet adds puns and humor. And so it takes that and it figures it out how to go do it in natural language in your native language that you've selected. Very complex, incredible amount of you know money has been put into it in time and, and brilliant people have built it. But that's effectively how it is. It looks at a bunch of things and resources um, and does it. The reason that's kind of interesting is because you can, in the future, there are things called narrative ma manipulation are going on where AI can be used to create all types of information that's not factually 100% correct or has not been fact-checked, disseminated in lots of areas to influences, influence populations, demographics, things like that. And then later when you're looking for information on the subject, this has already been planted, it's already seeded, and it just became fact, though it never actually was. Hmm. So, this, so there's some transparency and explainability of the technology, which is much bigger. Not as practical for your, for your business owner, which, you know, at the end of the day, there's, there's ways you can leverage it, which is for your audience, probably a better way to go um, in the conversation. But there's a lot of factors at play with AI that, that need to be taken in consideration from a policy or a bigger standpoint, but also then, you know, from day to day, what do, what do I get from it as a business owner? Um, just things. That yeah, consider. it's interesting. And you talk about the narrative and the voice. I, I'm, I'm from Tampa Bay, so I like to have chat GBT write content in the form of a pirate. And I love it. It's like the most entertaining thing in the world to me. I think it's hilarious. Arg. I agree. <laughs> so, but Thank let's you. talk about content because I see mixed reviews in this. Some of the best copywriters that I follow are, are giving mixed reviews. Sometimes the AI driven copyrighted content it's creating outperforms their own handwritten or their own written. And then sometimes it doesn't, you know, like sometimes their, their copy is still performing the AI's copy. What have you found when it comes to copywriting? Have you found that sometimes one AI is better? Sometimes it's not. Uh, or do you think that sometimes AI or, or is it all the time now AI is successfully beating some of the best copywriters that are writing their own content? Uh, it is never always either way. Uh, and there's a lot of, there's a lot of factors to that. So if I will say for the purposes of Google finding it, authentic content that's written and it's creative, that's on a subject that's relevant, that, that has originality will always perform better than from, from like an engagement standpoint, than one that is just, you know, vanilla plain AI made it. And it wasn't, you know, it's nothing really new in it. 
how it's distributed and how it becomes training. There's a lot of factors that go on that with influencing and things like this and, and how it's liked and shared and how the algorithms pick it up. That's a different issue. Performing is a whole word because, you know, we'll have like, just for example, on LinkedIn, we'll do posts and may only get 10 likes or 400 views. And I got a really nice network on LinkedIn, but we'll get 20 inbound meetings from that one post because it's targeted to a certain level of hashtags and people and the people that we know should be reading this based on how we've interacted with them social media have a high engagement rates back for a very small post we used to do posts where we get a half a million views and get no leads from it and so which one really performed better it, and, and in both of those cases some are handwritten some are ai driven some are a little bit of mix of both what really matters is the intent and how you're supposed to be using the the, the content of any type video audio image text whatever it's the intent that matters. It's the it's the consultative level of understanding the strategy and what you're creating and why and where where and how you're distributing it and who's put in front of what. That's that's the bigger measure. We we, we all tend to lean towards vanity metrics like likes follows views, uh, but they're not nearly as important as converting into leads, business, and you know customers' revenue. And and there's those don't always line up with people whose expectations in particular in the lead generation marketing departments, you know, the world or the companies. There's a lot of nonsense that goes on. It's all about the metrics and let the, not the metrics that actually matter, which are your you getting revenue opportunities. So how should we use it? You've been doing this well before this thing was even known, right? So <laughs> how do we use AI to be able to help us with content without just falling into this trap of just taking it and having it do the work for us? Because I think that's really a tempting thing. Yeah, it should do so. So first of all, you should go to instantlyrelevant.com. And set up time with me and I'll walk you through it. But the 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 real idea is you should be leveraging it, but it's probably not your core capability. So have a fundamental understanding of what its possibilities are. And, and if you're if you're if you're a solopreneur, you're just getting going, leverage it yourself, learn from it, use it to accelerate. If you're an established business, let's say with you know a million plus revenue to what you know and up, get either a company that knows what they're doing with it or get a resource on your team that can understand what it is to leverage it in your business without having to kind of really, you know add more cost because it doesn't help you then, right? If you have to add a whole person to go do it, it's not really helping you because you're you're trading costs for something else. So leverage it enough to know it, know that it's not probably your core competency and then learn how to leverage it to accelerate either through, like I said, an individual or a company that knows what they're doing with it. And it's just one component, right? The, the content writing is one piece. And that it's different though, when you're leveraging it for, you know, if you look at social media, you have to do commenting, you have to have a brand, you have to have a brand image and message and taglines and a whole storyline outside of logos and colors, like your differentiators, unique selling propositions, all those things are still from you as a human, you know, to develop and, and then leveraging the technology at that point, it helps to improve what you're saying or how you're leveraging it. That, that's how you leverage it. It's still the hard work needs to be done to be differentiated and, and out in front of uh, your competition. So what are some ways that we could be using this kind of technology and AI that you just don't see that people even are even aware of or possible? Yeah. So a, a big one is definitely leverage to use it to help create articles, posts, uh, you know, replies, things like that, even email messages and copy. The great use case for that. You can use it to help uh, now create images, videos. You could even leverage it like in an in a interview to do the transcripting and you can use that transcript. You can upload it to chat GPT, for example, and say, hey, summarize this uh, transcript and give me the five most you know, salient points and write an article. It'll do that. It's you know, that's that's a if you, you know, you're on a podcast, you want to do some social media and you want to do some articles. If it does it all for you because you just dump it off to there and it turns around and gives you your article. That's a huge time saving just from the production level. You can leverage it for video capture to capture highlights, let's say in a meeting, um, for sales training, for for all types of things. Uh, you should definitely leverage it for your calendar scheduling, you know, like if like Calendly comes to mind or something like this for your CRM. Those components are all there. You know, you want to make sure that they're all, they're all able to kind of integrate and work with each other so you don't get technology fatigue. So you don't have yet another technology that you're leveraging, kind of. Um, but it should be leveraged to help, you know, going back to the intelligent automation principles to accelerate your business by automating as much as a process as you can to accelerate the people or your customers in, as the end result. So well, let me ask you, I think the elephant in the room that people kind of talk about the most with AI, which is the fear of AI, what it can do. And Musk is freaked out by it. And I personally am freaked out by anything that Elon Musk is freaked out. Because I got a little bit of man crush on that guy. He's awesome. 
But I mean, you know, he, even, you know, Elon Musk is like, dude, this should be regulated. Like, this is the scariest thing that we should be dealing mm-hmm. with as a society because of its capability. You made reference earlier to something that kind of is a little bit freaky. The AI is, you know, disseminating content that could potentially not even be accurate to the intention of changing the narrative of how we view things. That's powerful. Like, you and I both understand the power of what that could do with literally being able to control the mass population's views on certain things that based on factual information, which isn't even factual. So there's a lot of things we can go down to it. What, what's your thought of that? I mean, you've been messing with this for a long time. What, what do you think we should and maybe shouldn't even really be fearful of when it comes to AI? Absolutely. There's needs to be some kind of uh, culpability and regulation in, in it. And it comes through transparency uh, and explainability of what the outcomes of the models are. So that could be in the form of sourcing for content that can be in, hey, this credit decision was based on these pieces of information and is showing what it is. Because models are made by humans, right? And, and they are you know, they tend towards bias and unfairness because of the, because of humans involved. It, it may not be intentional. It just might be what, it, what happens. And, and, and if you extrapolate this globally, which is more like probably how Elon Musk looks at this, Musk looks at this as well, is that what's fair in the West is not going to be considered fair in the East, in, in, the, in, a, in the different parts of the, uh, the world. What's fair in, in the North may be fair in the South. And what's explainable in one place may not even be legal in another. So how does the same models and how do, this, how do these things adapt based on uh, you know, geopolitical and you know, colloquialism and all the other things that would go with it. This is where uh, this is where it's frightening because it's going on now. I mean, narrative manipulation has been going on for years. It, it, and, you know, and, and search engines and face, you know, on Facebook, but like uh, social media, let's say like that. Those places can sway public opinion quickly. Uh, hacking and doing like all that kind of stuff, right? Those these things are going on now. That's why it's so frightening because it's becoming more and more powerful and more and more capable. For the day to day, though, come come back down, right? These are things that affect your big life, and and quite honestly, individuals probably can't do a whole lot except vote, it's, you know, and 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 ask the pe- the people in charge, so to speak, to go do something about it. Day to day, though, as they get more powerful, they're going to really help your business, and, and that so the more powerful they get, there's the other edge of how they could be leveraged on a mass scale. Um, but that there's no question, you need some kind of regulation, kind of you know, transparency involved. But your day to day use, you, you should be leveraging these to to uh, give yourself an edge in business. You're very smart at what you do with helping businesses do just that, with using AI and leveraging AI to be able to help them grow the business. What are some of the ways you're doing that? What are some of the ways that you work with your clients to use AI strategically, intelligently to do some of the things you've talked about, including you know building out your brand on social and producing more valuable content and getting people to convert, amongst many other things? What, what are you using AI for to help your clients now? Yeah. So, it, well, it's interesting. First of all, up to maybe like a few months ago, and, and even now I'd say most people don't care about AI. They don't care about the technology. They don't even care about marketing. What they care about is getting leads for their company. They care about growing revenue. They care about, you know, in the growing their business or, or stabilizing it. And so how we leverage it is in the outcome and the outcome of, of being able to deliver more content more consistently, doing more engagement with, you know, the outreach or the inbound effects or, or paid search or whatever it is. Uh, better list building, all the things that go, we, we leverage technology to do that, but to get better outcomes for the customer, but also to keep the prices at a, you know, a better price point to be able to give you more value, more time, more effort for what you're paying for. So for us, when, when people hire us, they hire, they get a full marketing team, a strategist and a lead generation team for less than a full-time hire. The reason we can do that is because we leverage a ton of technology to enable and automate a lot of things behind the scenes and accelerate the team's incredible scale so you can you can do that. You don't need to hire a whole marketing team. You can hire our company and you have, you know, 13 roles of strategists in an ex, in a lead gen team for less than a full-time hire. It's a it's a it's a way to get way more power, more and more flexibility uh, and we do that because we use all these technologies in the background. It would cost you it would cost you thousands a month if you used all the technologies we leverage to use across all our customer base to deliver. And so you you get that as part of the kind of offer. And that, that's how we use it. We, we, we use it in a way that's completely outcome driven. So let's say uh, I'm a small business and I'm doing whatever now. And uh, I, 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 what, what can you what, give me an idea of what it looks like with what you guys do with your ter- services using AI as well to be able to help me grow? What kind of things do you do? Well, we have a formalized, we have our own system. It's called lead system. So we launch you and we go through an engage phase an amplify and a dominate phase. Those are all supported by the teams, technologies, and this kind of consultative executive uh, consult, uh, coaching approach. 
But during during the initial piece, we, we really should take a holistic look at your business, you, your marketing strategies, your outcomes, your goals, the past. Because what I find in the marketplace, which is a big problem, that people are buying lead gen and they're just getting cold call, or cold emails or outreach. And that's maybe one component of 10 you might need to go do to really make it work. So we go through this consultative piece to figure out how your social media president is, what's your executive eminence, which is your personal brand image, plus your company image, plus your thought leadership, plus kind of everything you're doing from your messaging. And we, we take a look at that. We look where you where your customers exist, where they're secondarily existing. And then we say, here's probably the inbound, which is your content creation and, and the interest people are, are finding by just reading your stuff. Here's your outbound, which might be commenting, it might be messaging, it might be emails, it might be dial and smiling to your paid search, to your PR, going on podcasts, going to do whatever you need. We look at that holistic piece, put together the plan, get agreement and alignment, and then we start testing through engage. We find successes and amplify it. And then we repeat it in the dominate phase. So you can you can turn you can get predictable, repeatable success. So you can, you know, um, have some more stability in, in your growth and be able to make the right investments in your company because you know that you're getting X amount of leads and you can convert Y. And all through that, right? That that you know, we're looking at your brand. We're seeing how's this, you know, how is it resonating? So we're taking a look at all those components too. It's it's much more holistic uh, in nature because for it to work long term, uh, it has to be. Where do you think, and you do a lot with social media, from the clients that you deal with, where do you think business owners go wrong with what they're doing on social media that you guys help correct? Uh, there's a there's several things. Uh, one is they're, they're uh, too serial in what they're thinking. Like, oh, I, like I could just do one campaign. Um, and I, I hear, here's a big mistake. Lots of a lot of the customers we have have made, and this and it's not a mistake. It's just it's mis- misleading from other companies. And I, and, I, and I'll say it the following: Let's say you have a list of five thousand targets that are really good, and then a company is going to go do a cold call or a cold outreach to it in an email. They may get let's say a hundred that raise their hands that I want that, and you're so happy because over that ninety day period you got a hundred new customers, but you just spammed forty thousand nine hundred potentials. Because that's where it ends up. If they don't say yes, they're like gone. And then now you're spammed. And now what do you do? So what we see is this rise and these people are super happy and they fall off. And then they go to another legion and they go and do the same thing, but with less results because you're hitting similar lists and you're getting less and less. And then at the end of it, you're like, oh, wow, it's not working anymore. Why? So the social media strategy, the way I built to 100 and almost 73,000 people on LinkedIn is by just commenting sincerely on other people's posts. I used to be 30 hours a week in social media. Uh, now, you know, Insular Relevant covers my accounts 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So I'm, as we're talking, I'm networking. I'm out there commenting on posts and they're driving traffic to my inbound. This is including the paid searches, include any uh, uh, email campaigning we're doing. Like most, most 98% of ours is inbound because we're giving on social media. So a lot of people are, are saying, we do this, we, 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 and here's my email and here's my outreach and here's all that. Instead of taking the time to go do thoughtful comments and interactions with people, other people's posts, which makes them happier because they're you're showing actually attention to somebody, which drives the the three, you know, three factors or four, we say four factors, but three factors of buying, which is knowing, like, and trust. And then people, we believe you need more than that for people to buy from you. You need relevance. And that's content because I may trust and like you and know you, but if you're not relevant to what I have as a problem, I'm never buying from you. So the content and that all that strategy put together creates relevance. And then when you start doing outbound or paid search or inbound type of campaigns, you'll get more leads because you became relevant a lot more places. And then when people check you out, you check out way better. So it seems like an easy way to save a ton of money and reduce your budget while actually increasing engagement at the same time. Yeah, I mean, no doubt. So our whole our whole thing is let's reduce your marketing if you have a marketing spend. And and, and we're not saying go get fire your marketing team. If you have a good marketing team and but if you if you're thinking of hiring a bunch of people or you think you you're gonna make some attrition or you need to make cuts, we say we can accelerate what's already there with a less budget than you probably already are spending because we'll get you more power. And the best thing is I we do this month to month. We don't even say, hey, 12-month agreement. We're so driven on outcome, we make it a month to month service that we're every month proving our worth. And this is very attractive and not normal in this kind of lead gen agency model that we're confident enough that we know we can go month to month with our customers because they stay for 12, 15, 18 months and more um, because it works. And, and that's why we do it that way. And, and that's where you we, uh, the idea in the business side is to de-risk the W2 load on your payroll and increase your ability to find leads and customers revenue in that same motion while we're spending less investment toward it. Yeah, makes it makes a ton of sense. Um, 
with that being said, you know, what do you think? You mentioned LinkedIn. What what do you like LinkedIn? What social platform do you really see the 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 best potential future of the most value in? And again, I know it's hard because you know LinkedIn's B2B, so I'm B2B, right? Pinterest is, is mostly driven by women. I'm not, you know, I'm just trying to say the demographics are different between the social channels. So I know it's not an easy question to ask or answer, but what do you think? Like from where your perception is, what 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 platform do you think has the most valuable right now or potential upside? Well, the, the answer is that it, it really depends on what it is you're, what problem you're solving and where your customers are and what you're selling. There is no one answer. So we, we personally um, focus mostly on LinkedIn. Um, that's where our customers are. That's where the people who, you know, no one, by no one's on LinkedIn to buy anything. They're there to sell stuff. They're there to get jobs or post a job. So the idea is when people buy something, they buy from, they go to Google, right? They search. But where LinkedIn's interesting is because we, we help skip the Google thing and they just know they go to you. And so when we can do this where people have already gotten to know, like, and trust you and your B2B service specifically uh, or a one-to-one service, like a coaching service, that's a really good place. If you're doing more B2C, more uh, art, more color, like that's Instagram, um, you know, or TikTok even, or uh, Pinterest, there's just different models of where the customers are looking. The same people might be on Facebook don't, aren't going to interact the same as they do on LinkedIn and, and, and or in Meta. And so this is part of that launch phase where we figure out the strategy of where you should be putting your effort and time as a primary social media channel, if at all. For example, if you're a pool builder, you're probably not on social media at all. So is it conferences? Is it trade industry journals? You have to figure out where your customer is because it might not make make sense uh, to be on social media. But the idea is you need a primary channel that where they're most likely to be likely. And then you still need secondaries for the purposes of when people search your name in Google, you kind of get the whole page of Instagram. And, and they, don't have to, they don't have to perform particularly well, but you just got to be there. It gives you more legitimacy, more validity. That takes time and resources, but that's that's kind of the idea of what we do is we set all that up, manage all that because it does matter. So when, like I said, when people check you out, you you check out. You you're really big on AI, you're really big on technology, but it's interesting because when I listen to you, a lot of what you're talking about is is manpower. It's manual, right? I mean, going in and and leaving uh, legitimate comments. Um, on people's LinkedIn. That's not something that AI is doing or tech is doing. So wh- well, where, what do you do in your world to combine these two where you're incorporating the AI and the, the technical aspect to be able to enhance the results that the company may get? So it's human led. Uh, the way our team can do so many comments is we use AI to help summarize the post into a thoughtful comment and a certain structure that we like that offers engagement without sharing point of view. That way we can be cross industry when we're doing the engagement for companies to say, here's the here's the comment we'll make. A human still makes it and checks it. So AI is enabling, instead of me having to read, you know, 2000 words, AI can do it in a second and say, here's an interesting comment to make and, and a question to ask. And it really, really helps that's drive. so cool. So you put the post in and say, for example, and I mean to interrupt you. Actually, I did kind of. No, that's it. fine. Like, it, it, it's because I was excited. So, uh, but then you say, you put the post in and say, hey, like, what do you think is a reasonable comment? And then the AI can give that to you. And then the human makes the final decision on on adjusting that to actually, that's kind of how that, that in that example works. Uh, well, even more than that. So what we'll have is your, we'll develop the targeted list of like ideal customer profiles or people in the specific case of LinkedIn. And it can work across any social media, but in LinkedIn specifically, we'll know who we want to meet with. We'll we'll keep we'll we'll start fo- following them and looking at their profiles. The technology actually will let us know when there's a post they've created and already pre-assess what it should reply, and then you just go click click. You you know we, we'll manually review it. You don't have to manually review it. You can automate it. Don't recommend that. Um, and I'll tell you a funny story why. But the AI will actually help you not only source the post you should reply to from that list that you want, but also what to say and what to ask, and then. Then when they reply back, then you can automate some of the initial messaging to drive them to your call to action, either it be a calendar or a website or whatever else. So you can get real scale really quickly to do that. And that, that's where you can, you know, there's, you can get like whatever is a hundred, you can make a hundred connections a week or whatever it is on LinkedIn. But if you do it this way and you're doing comedy, you'll, you know, we get 25, 50 a day inbound requests of relevant people wanting to connect or follow. And that, that's a really, I mean, that's a factor of, you know, what is that? Five ten x over what you could do on your own if you're just it's all about you me me me. So the technology's there. The reason by the way you don't automate it. Here's a funny story. In one comment, maybe it was about two years ago that when the technology was a little more nascent, it replied back that not only did my father um, die in a plane crash like the person had described, he was also an NFL player. <laughs> Which is true. And I saw this comment and it was getting like trending. I'm like. I'm not sure what happened with our AI. I just deleted it. I was like, holy moly. 
And I was like, from there on, we're like, we got to keep, and we were really kind of going crazy at that point. Cause that's how I, we, you know, we blew, it blew up some following because we just did it at incredible scale. And I was like, we have to pull this back and keep brand because your brand matters. So it was like, I, don't, I was like, oh man, what else was set up? I missed. So don't do it. Don't full automate it. Keep a human in the loop. They can be accelerated by it. They can still do a lot more with a lot less time. Uh, and and if I wouldn't, you know, our recommendation is don't hire for it and, and, you know, bring some pros into what they're doing. So you don't have a learning curve and all the costs that go with it and, and overhead. But that was a funny day. I was like, oh, wow. Yeah, it's, it yeah, sounds like an interesting day. As I called my dad, I'm like, hey, dad, are you an NFL player? No. <laughs> <laughs> guy in a plane crash. So it was great stuff today. Where can everybody go that's listening and watching here to be able to learn more about AI tech, the things we've talked about, and, and, and talk about working with you guys as well? Yeah, I appreciate that. Uh, instantlyrelevant.com is where you'd go learn about our, our uh, lead generation system, a uh, little information about the company. Uh, we kind of have a cheeky about section. We say, actually, you know, it says, seriously, we actually give a shit. Anyway, so it's kind of fun. But we're, we're a fun company to work with. So instantlyrelevant.com, uh, that contact form there or the uh, county will actually come to me right now. Actually, I'm still taking one-on-ones with, with our customers that are interested. But I also do this at the end of the podcast. If I will give you my personal cell phone number and you, you don't call, don't leave messages because I won't pick up and I don't answer ever. But this is actually my personal phone. It's 314 314- Nine five four six nine zero zero. That's three one four nine five four six nine zero zero. If you text me and say you heard me on the Ty Crandall show, I will make sure that I will do I will do a workshop for your company or whoever you like to talk about these technologies, what we're using, what can accelerate, and just do like you know a thirty minute hour whatever workshop for whoever you like to help you think through that strategy and what some things to consider and and have a conversation around it. Completely free. I'll do that. that. I will absolutely do that um, for you. I love that. Thank you so much for coming on today. I appreciate you sharing your wisdom. I, I appreciate you having me. Thank you so much. All right. So listen, the, the next step you really want to take is go to instantlyrelevant.com. If you go to instantlyrelevant.com, this is a phenomenal site. There's a lot of information. Probably one of my favorite parts of it is the blog because they dive into tough topics like content marketing, engagement, um, AI, everything you need to know about AI and marketing. And you got to keep in mind that Instantly Relevant and Thomas, they've been doing this stuff years before anybody knew about ChatGBT. I mean, they've been playing with the exact same tech uh, years before. So they are way, way, way ahead of the game of using a technology-driven approach to be able to help you enhance your results. And if you want to see the results, then go to instantlyrelevant.com. Go to the bottom of their page. Check out their social media posts. There are their social media links. You can easily find all of them there. And you can see the kind of content they're putting out, the kind of engagement, the kind of following uh, that they're actually gaining. And while you're on the site, you can also learn about services they have, testimonials. Uh, you can even see the approach and see what they're doing more in depth than what we talked about today and why it's so effective effective to help you drive leads into your business. So many of us do this. It's really funny because Thomas hit on this exactly. We do something, we test, the results kind of diminish. It doesn't work. We move to something else. We do the same thing. And he, he mentioned it in an email, but really we do the exact across all channels. We do exactly the same thing. We just fail and then we surrender, give up, and then move to something else thinking that the channel is the problem. You're the problem tell you this, but you might be the problem. So we've got to fix that. And they've got a really phenomenal tested solution to be able to help you do just that, to be able to incorporate technology, to be able to actually do what you're doing, but way better with significantly better results. And by better results, I mean, actually real engaged potential customers that become paying clients, which is what we all want. So it's all at instantlyrelevant.com. Go there, check it out, book your free call. Make sure you're also texting Thomas on the number he provided. I'm going to repeat that. That's 314-954-6900. That's 314-954-6900. Of course, I'm going to put it in the show resources as well. And just say you heard him on Ty Crandall's show. And then he's going to do that free workshop for you and your team as well to talk more about exactly what they can do to help you. So make sure you visit instantlyrelevant.com. And make sure you also text that number 314-954-6900 to access your free workshop. Thanks.